Case number nine. Three homicide victims found in Santa Barbara, California, all of which were less than one year old. Identities were unknown, labeled as two John Doe's and one Jane Doe. Cause of death, drained of blood from a puncture done on the soft spot of their head. DNA found on the victim's head state that puncture was made with the beak of a vulture. The victims were alive when the puncture wound on their head was made. That's odd. Vultures eat dead animals. It's rare for them to eat anything alive. Also, I seriously doubt a bird could get their hand on three human babies. Someone must be using their beak as a weapon. I don't see in her notes that Detective Bidia draws this conclusion. I'll see what statements and evidence she was able to gather. Statement by Rogelio Diaz taken in the year 1995 as follows. I saw their bodies. Their skin looked wrinkled and they hardly weighed anything. They were naked and so small. I would have thought they were dolls except for the smell. They were already starting to rot. But let me backtrack. See, things like this don't happen. And I've lived here for many years. I work in the farm that cultivates agave. It's hard work, but it pays the bills. We're not a big farm, small compared to others. I work with a few other men. I know just about everyone, and nothing has ever felt odd until they moved here. The cult. The divinity of the eternal light set up one of their temples in town. They have been here for a few months, and they didn't cause trouble or anything. Some of them try to recruit you, but they're not forceful about it. I'm not sure why, but since they moved here, I could not shake a troubling feeling about them. The day I found the children, I came to work like any other day. I remember I got distracted by a vulture that was perched by the fence near some of the agave plants. I never really liked vultures, so I went to shoo it away. It flew until I could not see it anymore. It was while there that I noticed two agave plants were planted wrong. It was as if someone had torn it from the earth, only to bury it back up. The dirt around it was unsettled. I dug up the agave so I could plant it back correctly. And when I dug it up, my fingers touched something soft beneath. I remember I tore my hand back and I thought, Maybe a rodent had died under there or something. I didn't want to stick my hand back in there. So I got my shovel and picked up the dirt. I felt something come up with it. It was only when it was out that I saw that it was a baby. I yelled for help and my coworkers ran towards me. They saw what I had dug up. One of them went to tell the boss. The others looked at the other agave plant that was planted badly and together we pulled it out only for our suspicions to be true. There was another baby underneath. The boss came after and she called the police. It was the first time I saw a dead body. Nothing like this had ever happened. I remember thinking that this was the reason why I kept having the bad feeling. All I know is that before the divinity of the eternal light came, nothing like this had ever happened. And now, two dead bodies. No one knows who the babies are. It's not one of the town people. It could only be from them. I don't know what they do up there in their temple. Probably worship the devil and they use the poor babies as sacrifice. End of statement. Second statement by Lucy Thompson, owner of the Agave Farm, as follows. You talked to Horohelio, right? He's the one who knows the most about the children. Everyone else came after he had dug up the first child. When I came out, the two bodies were lying lifeless on the dirt. Small little babies. I don't know who could have done this, but they were on my farm. So some people started giving me suspicious looks. It wasn't me. I can assure you of that. But something did happen the night before the babies were found. I woke up in the middle of the night. I don't remember why. Maybe I heard a noise or something, I'm not sure. The house was dark, and I found myself getting up. I felt unsettled. I went to my bedroom window and looked out towards my farm. 
There was nothing for a while, and I was about to go back into bed when I noticed the movement towards the far end of the farm. It was dark, so I couldn't be sure if my eyes were playing tricks on me. I looked for a long time at the slight movement, finally picking out a silhouette moving in the darkness. It looked like a person. Once I was sure, I pulled out my gun from the drawer, ready to scare them off my property. But then I heard a noise on the road just outside my farm, approaching the silhouette. It sounded like two or three voices, too far to distinguish. They had flashlights. I could see the lights moving from my window. Suddenly they ran, screaming things like, no, and stop. Where the silhouette was, a ball of fire suddenly appeared, lighting up the surrounding area, and I could see who the people approaching the silhouette were. It was the Lopez family. They lived a few blocks away from me. The father, mother, and one of their older children. The ball of fire flew high in the air and took off into the sky. Darkness flooded my farm again. I could see the Lopez family was still by the road. Their flashlights were still shining. They stayed there without moving for a few minutes, and then they left. I'm not sure what that was about, and at the end, I didn't go out to investigate. To be honest, I was scared. I didn't know what I had seen, and a part of me thought I was dreaming. But without a doubt, where the babies were found was the exact spot I saw the silhouette the night before. End of statement. Next statement by Leslie Dunham as follows. I found the third baby, a small little girl. She had no name and no one to claim her as their child. She was in my backyard. I have a small patch of agave plants there. I don't have them anymore. I pulled them all out. I was afraid that I might find another baby there if I left them. Before I found her, everyone was talking about the two babies that were found dead. No one knew who they were. They didn't match any description of missing children. A lot of people started whispering about the temple that had just set up in town. The divinity of the eternal light. They had only been here a few months. The people of the town were upset. They wanted judgment. Whenever any of the members were seen in town, they would be harassed. The members of the divinity never fought back. They would bow their heads and take whatever harassment came their way. I started passing by the temple to see if I could see anything odd. The people of the divinity seemed normal enough, but no one had really talked to them in full, and they always looked happy. When I found the baby, I was angry at them. I blamed them for everything. I went to the temple, not sure what I was going to do, maybe throw stuff at them, I don't know. I stood outside for a while. I could not see anyone. There was a vulture flying over the temple, and I could remember clearly how odd it looked because it was flying forwards and backwards, side to side, drawing a cross in the air. I looked at it for a long time until I noticed that some of the members from the divinity had come outside to watch it. One member, an older man, picked up rocks and started throwing it at the vulture. Other members started joining in. I found my voice and told them to stop harassing that bird. They didn't stop, but one of them turned to look at me and told me that I should stay out of their business. It shocked me, because for the first time one of the members didn't sound pleasant. He sounded angry. His eyes glared at me and I wanted to tell him that I knew it was them who left the girl in my yard, but I couldn't find my voice. His cold, penetrating gaze scared me. And the other members kept throwing, throwing their rocks, trying to hit the vulture, wanting to kill it. They didn't turn to look at me. They ignored my existence. I got out of there and sped to my house. I didn't pass by the temple anymore. I wanted nothing to do with them. And when I saw someone from town harassing one of the members, I turned the other way, no longer caring. End of statement. Fourth statement by Laurie Baldwin as follows. Three babies planted in the ground under the agave. That was what everyone was talking about. Who were they? No one knew. There were no missing children in town. 
and they weren't newborns. They were each between 8 to 10 months old. And the way they died? Horrible. They each had a hole on the top of their head. Their blood sucked dry. Nothing was gnawed at or bitten. People were saying that the babies were used for a ritual, Satanism and stuff like that. They needed their blood. I'm not sure. Most people thought it was the divinity of the eternal light. They were an easy choice. They moved here and within a few months these babies are found? That's suspicious. But I don't think it was them. I live next door to Magda and Javier Lopez. They have three children. The oldest two, Manuel and Mia, are 21 and 20. Their youngest is George. He is 15, I believe. I've lived next door to them since before their children were born and never had a problem with them. Maybe it was about five or six years back that I first started to notice something different. There was a vulture in their house. I had seen it on several occasions, and they seemed to treat it as a pet. It would fly inside their house through their windows or land close to them when they were outside. I didn't like vultures, but I never said anything. Minded my business. If it was just the vulture, I would be okay. But then it was the fire. Bright balls of fire would appear in their yard and fly away. I thought they were burning things and I complained to them that it was dangerous to be setting fires. Magda and Javier were always so apologetic, promising it would not happen again. Only for a few weeks later the ball of fire to appear. I called the fire department once, but when they came, they said there was no trace of a fire in their yard. I stopped complaining to the Lopez when... I don't know. I saw their oldest daughter, Mia, outside, and then... I don't know, it, it was dark. I had gone up to get a glass of water, and I just happened to look outside my window. It looked kind of like Mia, and then... Bright fire engulfed her, and she turned into a ball of fire and flew away. I know, I know, fucking crazy. I saw Magda run outside after. There is a fence that separates our yard, so I could only see the top half of her body through it. But she bent down and started dragging something into her house. I ran up the stairs so I could get a look at her yard from above and see what she was dragging. By the time I got up there, I saw her getting into her house, a pair of legs in her arms. I don't know, maybe they were from a mannequin. I tried to avoid them since. The days leading up to the babies being found, and the days after, I had seen the vulture more and more frequently, flying away from the Lopez's property. The balls of fire were more frequent as well. To be honest, it all became more frequent when the divinity of the eternal light came. I don't know if it's connected or not. But a few weeks after the last body was found, well, I saw Magda and Javier burning something in their yard. It smelled like burning flesh and it looked like, God, it looked like a pair of legs. I haven't seen the vulture or the balls of fire since. I know this doesn't provide anything about the babies. And to be honest, there's nothing that connects the Lopez to the babies. But there's something about that vulture, the Lopez's vulture. I saw it circling the temple of the divinity of the eternal light. I know it is the same vulture. I've seen it for many years. It was flying different though, but the symbol of the cross, always the cross when it flew over the temple. I could tell the divinity didn't like it. it seemed like the vulture was going there with a purpose. God, I know I sound crazy. That's all I really have, nothing solid, nothing I could ever really accuse them of. Only my suspicions. End of statement. Final statement by Henry Redenberger as follows. I live close to a hiking trail. I would go there often, even though my parents warned me about going alone, especially with the psychos at the Divinity Temple. My parents are sure they killed those babies, drained them of all their blood and probably bathed in it. Or at least that's what everyone whispers. They say the Divinity is a satanic cult, and they're probably right. Anyways, I went hiking by myself, like I'm not supposed to do. I usually never ran into anyone, a person or two from town in the rare occasion. 
I got maybe halfway in when I saw in the distance a circle of about ten people. I would have kept walking towards them if I hadn't recognized them. They were members of the divinity of the eternal light. I dodged quickly into the trees bordering the trail and waited in silence for a long time, shaking as I held my hand to my mouth. I don't know how long I stood there until I dared to peek out. I kept thinking that I would get killed if I was caught. They were still there, but they were starting to leave, heading in my direction. I was still hidden within the trees and kept as still as possible, convinced that if I moved one centimeter they would hear it. I heard them walk by me. I didn't move until I could no longer hear their footsteps. I wanted to run home, but I needed to see what they were circling. When I went to it, I saw the dead body of a vulture. It had been pierced through, and a cross was next to it, made by some plant, a cote, I think. I wanted to throw up. Why would they do that to a defenseless bird? All of them had been circling that poor dead bird. I haven't been hiking since. What if I ran into them? It was clear the divinity had a thirst for blood. End of statement. Detective Padilla tried to get a statement from the Lopez family. Unfortunately, they declined to take a statement. Detective Padilla notes that even though the Lopez family declined a statement, they invited her into their home. She underlines that the Lopez family had an extensive amount of mirrors scattered throughout their house and various crosses made from the Ocote plant. Again, with the cross of Ocote. Why did she think that was significant? <sighs> the three dead bodies of the children were not identified, and no warrant could be obtained to search the temple of the divinity of the eternal light. There was nothing conclusive that linked them to the murders, and the only suspicion came from them moving to the town a few months before the bodies were found. Cadaver dogs were brought in to examine agave farms in the area. However, no other bodies were found. A follow-up was done in 1999, and then again in 2005. No new dead bodies were found with the blood drained from a puncture mark in the head and buried under agave plants. The identities of the children still remain unknown. Detective Padilla noted that Mia Lopez, eldest daughter of the Lopez family mentioned in the statement above, was reported missing a few months after the initial investigation in 1995. I wasn't going to check if the missing person's report on Mia Lopez was still active, since her disappearance does not pertain to this case. However, Detective Padilla thought it was relevant. Missing person's case is still open for Mia Lopez. It is possible that Lucy Thompson's statement could not be followed because she declared that she saw the Lopez family by a fire bar that appeared in her farm. Something like that cannot be taken seriously. The reoccurring mention of the vulture is odd, but not unlikely, since by the time the statements were taken, people knew that the weapon was the beak of a vulture. They could have projected that to the sightings they had of a vulture, maybe thought they saw more than they did. The truth is, there is a good chance it was the divinity of the eternal light. Of course, that might be my prejudice against them. Again with that cult. I would like to have conclusive evidence against them. I will label this case as homicide and put it under the file of unsolved cases. Hopefully, when this case is reviewed again, something new can be unearthed. End of case nine. Forgotten Creatures, a weekly horror podcast by Darknet Productions, available on all podcast providers. For more information, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Forgotten Creatures Podcast. Rate and subscribe to the podcast as this helps us grow. If you enjoyed this podcast, let us know and tell your